Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the match between Villarreal and FC Barcelona. Barcelona were able to defeat Villarreal 5-1. Lewandowski was able to score two goals. Pablo Torre also scored one goal and Rafinha topped it all off by scoring two goals himself. Pablo Torre also came out with an assist, Lamin Yamal as well, and so did Pedri, who also came out with one assist. Paul Victor, who also came in for a total of 31 minutes, also came out with one assist. Every player in this squad was able to contribute in some capacity and Barcelona yet again showed up. Hansi Flick did state something yesterday about how he was going to approach Villarreal because of all of these injuries etc etc. The interviewers were like how do you expect Barcelona to perform? Could Barcelona be losing some matches? And this is what Hansi Flick did state before the match. When we started the season I said there will be no excuses so there is no excuses. We're going to be able to manage the game although we'll be careful with some players carrying a lot of load. And let me tell you this statement coming from Hansi Flick spring all over this game tonight. He gave out no excuses. He does not care whether Frankie is injured, Gavi, Fermin, Mark Bernal, Christensen, Arujo, Dani Olmo, Ferran Torres, Ter Stegen. He does not care if any of these players are injured. At the end of the day, the players that we do have should be able to bring out good results. And Barcelona did exactly that. Barcelona is in such a good run in La Liga so far that I would even compare it to what Bayern Munich has been doing in their whole season till this point. Bayern Munich are in a 23 run, meaning that they have scored 20 goals and only conceded three so far this season. Barcelona in La Liga are putting out very similar numbers, scoring 16 goals and only conceding two goals in the last three La Liga games. So Barcelona and Bayern have had their own very good starts in the season so far. And Barcelona also have six wins in six games with 22 goals scored and only conceding five goals. Barcelona continue their perfect run in La Liga under Hansi Flick. And once again, we have been able to do this with nine total players out. It is Frankie de Jong, Gavi, Fermin Lopez, Mark Bernal, Christensen, Arujo, Dani Olmo, Ferran Torres, and now Mark andre Ter Stegen. Barcelona has been playing such amazing football that it has been so good that it made Marcelino Garcia, the coach of Villarreal, smile and said, oh my god, it is a blessing to be able to play against a team like FC Barcelona. Look at the way that they have been performing. Look at how Lamin Yamal ma made that amazing cross to Rafinha. It is an honor to be defeated with a historical team like Barcelona. We are also dominating the charts in La Liga. The top scorer in La Liga Liga right now, it is Lewandowski, who has a total of six. Rafinha is in second place with a total of five. In terms of assists, Lamin Yamal is in first place with Inaki Williams with a total of four assists. Yamal just has one more on top of Inaki Williams. And then when you combine goals and assists, Lewandowski is in first place with Lamin Yamal in second place and Rafinha, who comes in in third. So this was our starting 11 against Villarreal. We had Lewandowski as the striker. Our four attacking midfielders was Lamin Yamal, Pablo Torre, and Rafinha. Our double pivot was Eric Garcia and Pedri with our backline being Jules Koundé, Dominguez, Inigo Martinez, and Martin. So we did rest a couple of players. Balde was not there. Kubarsi was also not there. Casado was also rested. Barcelona needed rotations and Hansi Flick knew that. Now, of course, this whole game was not all sunshine and rainbows. It took a lot of hard work to be able to defeat Villarreal 5-1. For example, in the beginning of the game, on the fifth minute, Eric Garcia intercepted the ball, but eventually passed it to one of the players of Villarreal. Villarreal almost scored a header by making a cross into the box and Pepe almost scored the first goal on the seventh minute. Pino makes a run from behind the defense. Sergi Dominguez almost made Pino onside. Eventually, Pino received the ball. He chips it over Mark Andre Ter Stegen, but Pino was claimed to be offside. But Barcelona were in danger because Villarreal looked like they had a game plan and it looked like they were going to be able to score the first goal tonight. The amount of passes Villarreal were doing in the first 10 minutes, it was a lot. A lot of the passes went through the air and Barcelona could not deal or defend those type of passes. Villarreal were also pressing Pablo Torre, Pedri, and Eric Garcia very well. I would say that in the first 10 to 11 minutes, it was all about Villarreal. They looked very lively and Barcelona had very little effect. But here's the thing, Villarreal were giving it their all in the first 10 to 15 minutes. And that's very normal because Raya Vallecano also did the exact same thing. They put all of their energy, all of their focus in the first 15 to 20 minutes of the game because what they were planning to do was to score a goal very early and then sit back and give Barcelona a very ugly game. Villarreal knew that was their only way out. And I believe that Barcelona low-key did also know that Villarreal were trying to give their all in the first 10 to 15 minutes and they in some capacity did allow them to do that. The bad thing about this game plan is that if Villarreal were giving it their all in the first 15 to 20 minutes, they were eventually going to drain out and that is what Barcelona were waiting for. And we did see exactly that. Villarreal were drained out after the 15th or 20th minute. So by the time we got into the 16th minute, we have already seen some hints of Barcelona getting back into the game. La Minimal does a curl shot that hits the left post. Rafinha tries to hit the ball but it was a rebound effect. He barely 
barely had any time to compose himself and then the ball deflected onto one of the center backs it could have been a goal two minutes later on the 18th minute mark andre tristan made a huge save where we saw alex Bena try to shoot but tristan was there just in time to deny Villarreal and deny the 1-0 but it was pretty nerve-wracking because Villarreal were looking at Eric Garcia as one of their weak links by the time we got into the 20th minute Eric Garcia had lost around two to three duels already so he was tested for a reason it's because Villarreal believed that the only way to get through Barcelona was through Eric Garcia and Tristan was making so many saves continuing to deny Villarreal so once we got into the 20th minute Lewandowski finally scored and Barcelona got into the game Pablo Torre came with the assist made an amazing through pass and Lewandowski shot to the bottom right corner it was an easy finish for Lewandowski fast forward to the 34th minute La Minimal made a cross to Eric Garcia Eric Garcia headers the ball and Lewandowski receives the ball and scores with a bicycle kick making it 2-0 for FC Barcelona so once we got into the 37th minute Villarreal did try something very interesting they said you know what okay look we have to do something so what they actually did was they sent all of their attackers to run behind the defense because they knew that was one of the weak links for FC Barcelona in the first 45 minutes Eric Garcia easily got caught when one of the attackers were making runs from behind and overall the defense was very absent because of the lack of good positioning and because of that Villarreal were able to make it 2-1 it was a horrible horrible defensive display coming from the defense and Eric Garcia was at the heart of it on the 42nd minute we saw Pedri misplace a pass Villarreal receives the ball they go on the counter one of the players of Villarreal makes a long ball to Pepe and then Pepe was on a one versus one situation with Mark andre Ter Stegen. They, this could have been the 2-2 but yet again it was another huge save coming from Mark andre Ter Stegen. I was really waiting for the appreciation post coming from the media like on Twitter or somewhere somewhere on ESPN or on YouTube but nobody said anything. I wonder why. I wonder why nobody put out any appreciation post for Mark andre Ter Stegen to deny Villarreal a total of three goals. He made very huge and important saves but I knew at that time that we were very unlikely to see any appreciation post. The world was waiting for Mark andre Ter Stegen to make the first mistake because there was an agenda against Mark andre Ter Stegen. Everything good that he does is ignored but the one time he does one mistake the whole world collapses and these Barza fans supposedly get offended and they want Mark andre Ter Stegen out. So after Mark andre Ter Stegen denied Pepe there was a corner that was taken. Ter Stegen reaches for the ball. He gets the ball but then lands badly on the ground and it has been said that Mark andre Ter Stegen is most likely going to be out for the next seven to nine months. His season is officially over and so we saw Peña come in for Mark andre Ter Stegen before the first half was completed but it was a huge game for Ter Stegen and I really do appreciate what he was able to do tonight against this team. So overall in the first 45 minutes I would say that Barcelona defended badly because they tried to intercept but when they did they were very late and that is why Villarreal were successful in the first 45 minutes and were able to test Ter Stegen a lot and knowing Beina with his talent and mobility and his pace I know that he was having a lot of fun. Barcelona were making so many mistakes at the back but here's the thing though I still felt very comfortable with Barcelona. Barcelona were still playing their very best game even with Barcelona downgrading themselves because of the lack of focus at the back. So we went on to the second half and we all knew that Barcelona needed to make some changes because if we wanted to win by a huge goal margin, we needed to improve our defense or at the very least improve our focus because Barcelona's defense was not 100% focused in the first half. So in the second half, if anything, we saw something very similar to how Villarreal started in the first half. Villarreal saw themselves with two to three chances, giving it their all just like in the first half. And I'm surprised that Barcelona did not make any changes nor did, you know, Hansi Flick ever considered to put in Balde, maybe put in Ansu Fati, maybe put in Kuparsi at the back, but no changes were made and we had to absorb all of the pressure coming from Villarreal and you know once again right like if you look at the shots and how much they took they had one blocked shot, they hit the woodwork once and had three shots inside the box. Barcelona had zero so Barcelona were really suffering in the first 10 minutes of the second half but yet again the same thing happened. Villarreal put in their all very early in the second half and they had nothing after that and Barcelona were able to absorb all of that pressure success and then bring their game forward. So on the 57th minute, we saw Pablo Torre score a goal with Pedri making an assist. It deflected off of Costa or I believe it was Bailey, but it was still counted as Pablo Torre scoring the goal and making it 3-1. On the 59th minute, we finally saw some changes. Pau Victor, Kubarsi, and Casado came in. Pedri, Pablo Torre, and Dominguez came out. On the 64th minute, a penalty was given and this could have been our chance to make it 4-1. There was a foul on La Minya Mal. Lewandowski ended up taking that penalty, but eventually, you know, he misses the penalty and he hits the post and I'm like, dude, we need to focus much more. Like Lewandowski in his best day would have made this goal and he could have had the hat trick, but Barcelona needed more. So we moved on from that missed penalty. We're like, forget about it. We can do better. Let's just move forward from there. On the 74th minute, we saw Rafinha come in and finally making it 4-1. And that was the moment where I 
did step back, right? And I saw the scoreline. I saw how Barcelona were suffering in certain moments of the game. And I'm like, okay, this was a weak game for Barcelona. It was not one of the best, but still the team still managed to score four goals and they could have scored six. So I'm like, how in the world is Barcelona is even in this position? How in the world is Rafinha getting the goal, making it 4-1? And this was one of our worst displays this season. And I believe the reason why Barcelona continued to impress, even though we did not have a good performance, and even though we had many injured players, was because we showed hunger and aggressiveness, which is the main core of this project. And I believe that this is one of the best pieces of news that we can point out so far, is the fact that no matter who you place in, no matter how ugly these games are, Barcelona, for some reason, come in with a huge goal margin, and they're able to find solutions. I mean, this goal was just amazing. Gerard Martin did not give up on that play. He passes it towards, I believe it's Lewandowski, or it could, it could be somebody else. I don't I don't clearly see who it was, but he eventually does receive the ball, passes it towards Rafinha, and Rafinha just shoots the ball after the first touch. It was amazing. And from there, I really did see Villarreal get tired, and, and it was all Barcelona's game. Like, Villarreal committed the exact same mistake they did in the first half. They did not want to play against us. It was not their game plan. What they were looking for was the early goal, and then to sit back and make it an ugly game for FC Barcelona, but they were unsuccessful on that, and they were just tired. They could not play. That is the reason why they were committing so many fouls, and then we got into the 83rd minute, and Rafinha yet again scores another goal, scoring his second goal of tonight, and La Minimal made such a sexy assist. I'm like, dude, like, how did you even find a player like Rafinha in this position here? Like, how are you able to find this at the age of 17 years old? The only player I can think of that could be capable to make such an assist is Messi. Like, I can't think of any other right winger that can make an assist like that. Like, the way that La Minimal made that cross to Rafinha that led towards the 5-1, I'm like, bro, like, I don't, I just don't, I don't understand. This guy is truly generational, and that makes it four goals, five assists in all competitions for La Minimal at the age of 17 years old. And then these two goals coming from Rafinha, I think that it does define what he is today and how much of a monster he is under Hansi Flick. The commitment and the mentality that he does have, it is immense because he did miss two to three chances before those two goals that he did score. Pre-Hansi Flick, Rafinha would have missed those two chances and not even score at all. He would have been angry, frustrated, just giving up. But this is not the project that we are leading into today. Every player comes in with great mentality. Rafinha is the first one in line on doing so. And now for him, he has five goals and three assists in six La Liga games. What a performance. So in the last few minutes, we saw stupidity coming from Villarreal. There was two tackles on the, on the Minya Mal. I think that, you know, the, the ref should have punished those two players because I don't know what they were thinking by trying to basically break his ACL. And I don't, I don't understand, like, where is the punishment? Why did the ref not do anything? It was just stupidity coming from Villarreal. They, they were just frustrated. They were just like confused. They're like, how, how did this even happen? How was it even 5-1? And one of them was Elias. He's an ex-Barcelona player. He made a terrible foul on the Minya Mal. And I'm like, bro, like, what? where's the punishment? Give somebody a red card. This is not okay. If this was Vinicius getting tackled like that, the, the player would have gotten a red card. And so that is it, right? To like, I have to clap it up. I know this is going to sound sus. I know you guys be thinking that it's not actually my hands clapping, but I just got to show the appreciation. That, that, that's it, right? Like, I have to applaud these players. These players have been amazing, right? This is the reason why we cannot be toxic. All, to all the Barcelona fans out there, you guys cannot continue to say, Barcelona is down now. We're, we're finished. We don't have this player or that player. Bad performance from this player. Hansi Flick is not going to win anything with Barcelona. We cannot act like that, right? I continue to say that. One of the main reasons why I even created this channel five years ago is because I wanted to change the environment of the Barcelona fan base. Th this Barcelona fan base that we're in today is too toxic. Too many clowns. Too many children right to anything li anything little you know that that's that's bad that happens in this club uh, you, they whine they're like eh, eh, end of the world eh, the Barcelona sucks eh, eh. like children and I know you guys are not children so we need to wake up like when I saw Mark Andre Tristan get the, a the ACL injury or whatever he does have right when he was down there were so many Barcelona fans saying thank god he's injured are you serious are you serious like why why are these people saying that why are people saying thank god Mark Andre Tristan is injured we, we cannot wait to sign a new player in January really are you serious it it just doesn't make any sense. And I saw some Madrid fans say that, you know, they wish him a speedy recovery. So why are there Madrid fa Madrid fans out there saying, I wish him a speedy recovery. But then there are some Barcelona fans, which is like 60% of it, right? Saying, oh, thank God he's injured. Thank God he got an ACL injury. I, I don't understand that, right? I, I strongly believe that Barcelona's biggest enemy, yes, it is La Liga. Yes, it is Real Madrid. Yes, it is Atletico Madrid. Yes, it is Florentino Perez. Yes, it is Javier Tebas. But one of them is definitely, for sure, their own Barcelona fan base. And I'm here to 
calm it down because in the route that we are going through, it is a very successful one. And we have to continue to push these players because we are winning and we're winning in a very fashionable way with none of our A-team players available. Frankie, Gavi, Mark Bernal, Fermin Lopez, Christensen, Araujo, Dani Olmo, Ferran Torres, they're not here. I don't know why I said Ferran Torres, but you guys know what I mean. Like most of our players are not here and we're still winning. And so we have to back this project. We have to back these players. Yes, many of these players are going to be making mistakes. Expect for Lewandowski to miss two sitters three games from now, but that's okay. Expect Rafinha to have bad performances here and there, and but that's okay. Expect La Mal to have a horrible game in one in one match, maybe give out a goal, and that's fine. These players are human. That is what Hansi Flick even said yesterday. He said, these players are human. They make mistakes. It does not mean that we need to crucify these players and say that they're not good enough for FC Barcelona in order for us to make a fair assessment on players or goalkeepers or, or whoever, on coaches, sporting staff, sporting directors, in order for us to make a fair assessment, even with Deco, right? In order for us to make a fair assessment, give it the long-term plan. Let's see how these players perform after one full season under our brand new coach. Let's see how Deco performs as our sporting director after having one successful transfer window where Barcelona is able to financially afford some players. Then we can assess, then we can make some judgments, but not now. Not now, my friends. And so our next match is going to be against Getafe. Barcelona will be at home, which is good news. And it is going to be taking place two days from now. It is on Wednesday. So no wonder Hansi Flick was making a lot of rotations today. And he did it against Villarreal. He could have made rotations against Getafe because that is considered as an easier match. Not an easy match, but an easier match. So yeah, we have a, another game in two days. Let's see how Barcelona perform. Let's keep our heads up. We demand 100% focus. Yes, even for the Barcelona fans, let's demand focus. Let's demand better assessments and just overall better, passionate, healthier support. That is it. That is going to be wrapping up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.